friends, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls. Got our phone lines up and running at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you've got questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, if you want to help your loved one or friend or family member or workmate wean themselves off of their prescription drugs and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we want to hear from you at 844-236-6010. Of course, if you have a success story, we love those. And if you want to just contribute to our conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the right side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, please go to my blog, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or brightsideben.com. Com. You can order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and help spread the word about how important a nutritional supplement program can be, especially if you've benefited from nutritional supplementation. If you've benefited from the longevity products, why not share the good news and make some money while you're doing it? And we can help you do that. You can sign up right off the websites, or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. We can show you how simple and easy it is to convert your success stories, convert your love and passion for helping people, convert your love for nutrition into a business that can generate you some money, a little bit of money, or a lot of money. We can show you how easy that is. Call. You can either do it off the website, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website, or you can call the Brightside Ben team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you love skincare, if you love it as much as I do, if you're using skincare products, you really want to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, or truth. Retinol gel, 5% retinol gel. You're not going to find that one anywhere, folks, except at truthtreatments.com. Truth 5% retinol gel if you're dealing with dark spots or accelerated aging, or you want to prevent the aging process from kicking in, which for many of us, skin aging kicks in at the age of 30 or even younger, early 20s, uh, late 20s, sometimes even the early 20s, the aging process, the skin aging process begins to kick in, even though you may not notice it. It's much easier to prevent the visible signs of aging than it is to reverse them. So uh, if you're interested, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, if you're interested in slowing down the aging process, 30, 35, that's not too young to start an anti-aging skin health program, truthtreatments.com, you can find out all about our Truth Retinol 5% gel, as well as our other vitamin C containing truth products. Truth Balm, Truth Serum, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Never any fillers, waxes, preservatives, fragrances, water, silicon, oil. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in our Truth Skin Health products. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about the ketogenic diet. Love this stuff. The high fat, eat fat, lose fat diet. Eat fat, lose weight. Uh, that just blows me away that you can do that. Eat fat and get skinny. That's the ketogenic diet. But it's not just a weight loss diet. It's a, the quintessential health diet that turns the body from a uh, sugar burner into a fat burner. If you want to leverage the power of this eating protocol, this way of eating, this, this uh, 
really super high powered medical diet. The ketogenic diet is a medical diet. You want to leverage its power, use nutrients, accessory uh, ancillary nutrients like carnitine, which we talked about. We're, we're going to talk about vitamin E later, selenium, alpha lipoic acid, which I absolutely love, probiotics. We're going to talk about these extra supplements that you can take while you're using the ketogenic diet over the coming days. For now, I want to focus on a dietary component that doesn't get a lot of airtime. This is a, this is a, di- a food component. It's a, you can use it as a supplement. I'm talking about fiber, which is a food element that plays a major role in fat metabolism as well as the health of the intestine. And uh, if you're dealing with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, any health issue that affects the intestine, you really want to be hip to fiber. And if you're going ketogenic, fiber can also support your body's ability to process fats. You've got two kinds of fiber. Actually, you've got three kinds of fiber. The two main kinds of fiber are called insoluble fiber and soluble fiber. Recently, there's a, a, a new class of fiber has become popular, and that's called resistant fiber. And we're going to talk about that a lot. That's a really interesting form of fiber. But for now, I want to just talk about the two main classes of fiber, which most of you guys have heard of probably insoluble fiber and soluble fiber insoluble fiber as the name implies is not soluble in water it's it doesn't dissolve in water it's the stuff that makes seeds hard or if you have a uh, if you picture a stalk of celery and you picture those those uh, that kind of uh, wiry stuff that lines the outside of the stalk of celery that's insoluble fiber insoluble fiber does not dissolve in water it's kind of stringy and we're going to talk about that here probably later today or, or tomorrow the kind i want to talk about for now is called soluble fiber and that's a kind of fiber that does dissolve in water soluble fiber is gives fruits and veggies a sort of squishy quality a mushy quality insoluble fiber gives fruits and veggies a hard quality Seeds are the classic example. The hardness of seeds is largely dependent on insoluble fiber. Uh, Soluble fiber, on the other hand, is squishy and mushy. Figs and dates and pears and, and squash, all of the apples, all of these kind of mushy fruits and vegetables get their mushy, squishy quality from their high soluble fiber content. Soluble fiber's got some really interesting benefits. In fact, insoluble fiber that's the one that's the kind of fiber we're going to spend a lot of time talking about because that's got that's just an amazing amazing uh, source of dietary supplemental nutrition i don't even know what to call it it's a food really although you can buy it as a supplement And, and insoluble fiber truly has some wonderful benefits for the gut but soluble fiber is really interesting especially as i say if you're dealing with ibs or or chronic or acute diarrhea or constipation and this is kind of interesting. Soluble fiber is probably the only thing you can use that's good for both constipation and diarrhea. In fact, it's just a general health tonic or a general health substance for the intestine. It has a soothing coating effect on the digestive tract. Remember, we always say jelly substances have a soothing effect on the digestive system. Jelly substances also have a healing effect. And soluble fiber forms gel. It forms a jelly substance. Whenever you see gel, you're probably dealing with some some form of soluble fiber. So soluble fiber has a soothing effect. It has a healing effect. And it also helps support the movement of food through the intestines. It helps stabilize contractions for folks who are dealing with cramping as well as diarrhea. And it can also, as I say, improve the symptoms of constipation. It it reacts with liquid. That's That's the definition of soluble fiber. It reacts with liquid. We use soluble fiber a lot in the skin health business, in the skincare business. And chances are, if you have a product that has a jelly nature to it in the skincare world, or also in shampoos, you're probably dealing with a form of soluble fiber. That jelly substance is a byproduct of the reaction between your soluble fiber and water, and that jelly substance can make it easier for you to pass your stools if you're dealing with constipation and the fact that it absorbs water soluble fiber absorbs water can also help you if you're dealing with diarrhea all right i'm pharmacist ben got more to say about soluble fiber we got your phone calls as well at 844-236-6010 you're listening to the bright side okay 
we are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages, brightsideben.com as well as pharmacistben.com. Uh, uh, and benfuchsarchives.com. You can also purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 and purchase products off the phone. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the phone as well, 866 866- 735-2470 is their phone number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. And don't forget about our Bone Broth Protein, Jordan, Rubin, Jordan Rubin's Bone Broth Protein. You can purchase that off of brightsidehealthproducts.com, brightsidehealthproducts.com. Got some other interesting uh, supplements up, but Bergamax, our Bergamat product, and we also have a CBD product coming up soon. I also have our acne supplement, a blemish repair complex made with NAC and selenium and vitamin A and zinc, lots of really cool nutrients that are not only important for helping you deal with acne, but also for liver health issues, for folks who want to prevent a hangover. The nutrients in our blemish repair complex can also help your body to- detoxify from alcohol or detoxify from drugs uh, for, that, um, for that matter. And you're not going to find mere window dressing supplements in our Truth Blemish Repair Complex either. Big fat, healthy doses of good nutritional supplements, hard to find nutritional supplements, including N-acetylcysteine and, uh, and selenium and chromium and vanadium. And what else do I got in there? Niacin. It's just packed. That's the way I like to formulate. I like to formulate with lots of the good stuff. Like your grandmother bakes brownies. That's what I like to say. Lots, lots of the good stuff. You know, your grandmother didn't worry about her packing and shipping and shelf life and preservatives. And she just wanted to make you the best darn brownie she could make. And that's the way I formulate my skin health products as well as our nutritional products. Truthtreatments.com and brightsidehealthproducts.com. Okay, so continuing on with the ketogenic diet and fiber. Soluble fiber has a soothing effect, as we said, on the digestive tract. It can be beneficial for folks who are dealing with diarrhea as well as constipation. If you have IBS or Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, soluble fiber can be your best friend, your best digestive friend anyway. And it's, uh, if you have any of these kinds of health issues, it may be worthwhile to use a, so- a soluble fiber supplement during the day. Yes, soluble fiber is found in, in uh, uh, fruits and veggies. It's a, uh, it's a food component. And it's always best to get your nutrients from foods, soluble fiber or vitamins or minerals, or whatever your nutrients are. It's always best to get them from foods. In the case of soluble fiber, uh, beans are a source of soluble fiber. Tofu is a source of soluble fiber. Avocado is a great source of soluble fiber. Sweet potato, um, Brussels sprouts, oranges, apples, pears, dried figs. You got to be careful with the fruits, though. The fruits are gonna. The sugar in fruits can throw off digestive health. I prefer folks using uh, using veggies to get their uh, to get their soluble fiber. Beans can also be a problem, but if you want to go the supplement route, you can use things like Metamucil or, or a bene, a, a Benefiber, Citrusel, but you don't really need to go out and get a brand name fiber. You can use a generic fiber. Some of these brand name fibers are ridiculously overpriced. Fiber is cheap stuff. It shouldn't be expensive. But if you go with the Benefiber or you go with the Citrusel, you're going to pay a lot of money for fiber. In my opinion, these things are really ridiculously overpriced. If you don't want to, you don't want to spend a bunch of money on brand name fiber. Just look up Dextrin on the internet, D E X T R I N, or methyl cellulose. These are the active ingredients in in Benefiber and Citrusel. Methyl cellulose is a skin. I use methyl cellulose a lot in the skin business. Both dextrin and methyl cellulose will absorb water and are wonderful sources of soluble fiber. And if you buy them generically, they're cheap. Look for food grade, of course. You can get them off Amazon or you can get them just pretty much direct on the internet. Use a quarter teaspoonful, half a teaspoonful, a little more, one teaspoonful. It's completely non-toxic. And just put it in water and drink it down. Do it in the middle of the day. Dextrin and maltodextrin, by the way. A lot of folks ask about maltodextrin, uh, which because of its bulking quality, 
provides powdered drinks with a certain uh, slip, a certain mouthfeel, they call it. This is what formulators actually call mouthfeel. And that's why you'll see maltodextrin in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, for example, and it's found in a lot of powders that are turned into into liquid for as just add water type powders that are turned into liquids for you to drink. If you just drink the water, it's watery. But if they add a little maltodextrin in there, the, the, uh, the solution has a little bit of body to it. And that body gives it a, 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 an attractive quality the formulators call mouthfeel. That's the purpose of, if you ever wondered what the purpose of the maltodextrin in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is, that's why it's there. Maltodextrin is technically a sugar. It doesn't really have a sweet taste to it because it's a long chain of sugar and it's kind of fiber. So you'll get a little, there's not enough really in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine to get soluble fiber benefits, but... Technically speaking, it is an example of soluble fiber. In any case, if you want to get your soluble fiber uh, from a supplemental source and you don't want to spend all that money on, on, bene, uh, on benefi uh, citrus cell or benefiber, just get the generic stuff. You can get that on the internet pretty darn readily. And of course, eating fruits and vegetables is always a good way to get your nutrients. It's always the best way to get your nutrients. Fruits be careful of, but veggies can't get enough veggies. You want about a pound of veggies for every 50 pounds of body weight. If you weigh 200 pounds, you want four pounds of veggies a day. And that's not a lot. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but a big salad is almost two pounds of, of veggies. So, it, and, and if you put, use, use a Vitamix to get a veggie drink, you can put two pounds of veggies easily in a big old Vitamix, uh, Vitamix vegetable drink. So four pounds of veggies is not a lot, is not necessarily a lot. A pound of vegetables per 50 pounds of body weight, if you weigh 200 pounds, if you weigh 150 pounds, that would be uh, three pounds of veggies. You'll get your fiber, you'll get your phytonutrients. It's just a real great way to make sure that you're getting all of the nutritional, uh, all, of, all your basic nutrients anyway, uh, by using veggies and veggie juices. If you want to go with the fiber, with the supplemental fiber, look for dextrin, look for methyl cellulose, and you can get that off the internet. The second type of fiber is called insoluble fiber. That's fiber that doesn't dissolve in water. Like soluble fiber, it's not digestible. It's a indigestible carbohydrate. That's the technical way fiber is described as an indigestible carbohydrate, at least indigestible or undigestible by humans and by animals. There is one creature, however, one little critter that lives on planet Earth that can digest fiber, and that is bacteria. So it's true that animals can, uh, can eat grass and eat fiber-containing foods and get the energy from that fiber, but it's not the animals like the cows and the goats and the sheep that are actually processing that fiber. It's the little bacteria that live in the intestine of those ruminant animals, goats and, and cattle and uh, uh, sheep, etc., giraffes and elephants. Actually, I don't know if elephants are ruminants. In any case... Uh, this, the uh, only critters that can process these fibers are, are bacteria. And it's not just bacteria that are found in the intestine of ruminants. We have them too. And this is a very, very important part of good health. Understanding the byproduct that is produced when our gut bacteria reacts with fiber is super important for taking advantage of uh, the ketogenic diet as well as the energy producing benefits of... Can you we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're talking about, fiber or ketogenic diet or dietary fats or really anything um, with health that has to do with health or nutrition, we are your go-to source. We want to be your go-to source for good health and nutritional information. 844-236-6010 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs. Never really understood the logic of toxic pharmaceutical drugs for helping heal the body or helping, I don't want to say heal the body. They don't heal anything. That's not the role of drugs, folks. The role of drugs is to, at best, lower risks of disease, at worst, mask symptoms of disease, neither of which is a, a healthful strategy. On the other hand, nutritional supplementation, nutrients, food, diet, exercise, 
meditation, relaxation, activating the parasympathetic nervous system. These are all these are all the ways we're supposed to access and leverage our health, our God-given health. And none of it requires a medical intervention. If you have to go to the doctor to get healthy, something's wrong. Not that an honest doctor will ever tell you that they can make you healthy. Because when you doctor something, you commit a fraud. That's what doctoring is. Imagine going to the IRS and giving them your, your 1040s every, on April 15th and say, here you go, IRS, here's my 1040, here's my tax forms. They're doctored. Now, you think that would be a good thing? Go to court and tell the judge, here's the evidence, judge. It's doctored. You think that's a good thing? Of course not. Because to doctor is to make something look like something it's not, to commit a fraud. When you get doctored, it looks like you're healthy because your test scores are lower or they're higher. That doesn't mean you're healthy. Test scores are not a way to indicate health. TSH and bone mineral density and cholesterol and glycation and blood sugar, these are not tests that, are, that indicate health. They're all based on reference values, on statistics, and human beings are not statistics. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang on, if uh, you're on hold, we'll get to you here in just a moment. From the, uh, from, let's see here, the gene environment susceptibility study, heart failure in the elderly set to triple by 2060. What the heck is that about? Triple? Are you kidding me? Largest increases will be in the age group 70 to 79 years and 80 years and older, predominantly in women. Yes, we are, as generally speaking, we're living longer, but that doesn't mean we're healthier. How can heart failure triple uh, in the elderly, triple by, uh, by 2060? According to Professor Ragnar Danielson, a cardiologist at Reykjavik Hospital in Iceland, these findings are a wake-up call for policymakers and healthcare providers. No, they're not. They're a wake-up call for us. They're a wake-up call for individuals, for people, not for healthcare providers. And you don't need a statin drug to protect yourself from heart disease, by the way. You don't even really need to worry about your cholesterol. What you do need to worry about is your, blood, is your sugar intake. That's the key right there, folks. And there ain't no doctor in the world that you need to keep your sugar down. I was talking to somebody yesterday about diabetes, and they were saying, what can I do? Oh, it was a gal from Canada, and she wanted to know how her husband, her husband is doing everything right, but his blood sugar is high. First of all, if you're doing everything right, your blood sugar won't be high. And he, uh, this gal wanted to know how he, her husband can get off of his, uh, his diabetes meds. Nobody has to be on diabetes meds, folks. And that's what I told this gal. You gotta watch your food intake. There's only two reasons why blood sugar goes up, okay? Only two. Number one, from stress, and it doesn't just have to be emotional stress, it could be physiologic stress. Arthritis can do it, autoimmunity can do it, cancer can do it. There's lots of reasons why, uh, there's lots of stress reasons why blood sugar can go up. But any stress in general, anything that spikes your cortisol, that makes your cortisol go up, cortisol's job is to release sugar from the liver, and when that happens, your blood sugar goes up. So anything that makes your cortisol, increases your cortisol, is going to make your blood sugar high. That's the number one reason. First reason. I don't say the number one reason, it's the first reason. The second reason is food. And that's it, folks. If your blood sugar is elevated, it's a food issue or a cortisol issue, period. It doesn't magically go up. And you don't need a drug to knock it down. And you don't need a doctor. You don't need a doctor. Now, if you got lots of extra money and you want to share it with your medical professional, by all means, go to your doctor. But you don't need him. Figure out why your cortisol is high. It usually has something to do with mental and emotional stressors. If it's a physiologic stressor, address that. And change the way you eat. And get on a good nutritional supplement program that features the B vitamins, thiamine in particular, as well as niacin. And then selenium. The amino acids arginine and taurine. Vitamin E can help you. Alpha lipoic acid can help you. And essential fatty acids as well. And don't forget the fiber. Fiber is very important for folks dealing with elevated blood sugar, as we will continue talking about tomorrow. And also the ketogenic diet, which we will continue talking about tomorrow, is also an important strategy for folks who want to lower their blood sugar. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Good morning, Robert in Las Vegas. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, uh, pharmacist. Thanks, thanks, my call. Appreciate it. Uh, always a pleasure listening to you. Not only do you mix... Uh 
great information, but you throw in humor every once in a while. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. I got two questions for you. One goofball and one serious. First off, okay. F-U-C-H-S, Fuchs, is that German? Yes. It's it's a very, it's like Smith in Germany, by the way. As weird as, and it's not even that weird here. You know, I thought, it, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story here. I Googled, I, um, Facebooked Benjamin Fuchs. I just wanted to see what was up there. How many ben and there was like page after page of Ben Fuchs and Benjamin Fuchs everywhere. And there's Fuchs toothbrushes and there's a director named Fred Fuchs and there's a the guy who started HBO is Michael Fuchs and Sir Hillary Fuchs was one of the first guys to climb Mount Everest and uh, there's a thing called Fuchs Fuchsian dystrophy which is an eye disease discovered by a guy named Fuchs and there's Fuchsian equations which is a mathematical thing that was just put together by a guy named Fuchs. It's a very common German name and it does mean five in German, FYI. Okay. So should we call you Hair Fuchs in the future? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, yeah, I guess. There are definitely Hair Fuchses out there. You can you can call there me you that go. if you like. What's what's going okay. on, man? How can I help you today? Uh, serious question. Um, I had a talk with a uh, pretty in-depth researcher the other day. I don't, or few weeks ago, actually. I don't want to mention his name because he's pretty got a pretty big name. But uh, he, uh, I, young Jeff, that came up in the conversation, he's flat out stated, maybe in the past, not so much now, but definitely in the past, that Joel Wallach and, and Young Jevity, particularly in BTT, were using GMO products. And I wanted to run that by Well, BTT is non GMO. That's first of all. And sure, sure, GMO sure. refers to food, GMO okay. refers to crops. So when you okay. say using GMO products, it's not like there's a lot of food products in Longevity. Although there are some, like the the you know, Longevity buys other companies. So some of the companies that they bought may have some foods. I don't. It's the GMO component is not very significant. Now the supplements, you don't really have to worry about them. Although sometimes people will tell you, well, it, the vitamin C came from corn, which was GMO corn. But the thing is, once the vitamin C is extracted out of the corn, it's not a GMO vitamin C. The GMO is the corn, but that doesn't mean that the vitamin C for the came from the corn is GMO vitamin C. Vitamin C is just a molecule. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not like the, you're getting any corn when you get your vitamin C that's derived from corn. This is a very important misunderstanding. Yeah, GMO refers to food and crops. G GMO stands for genetically modified organisms, and it's a way of tweaking the genetics of foods, of crops, so that they can be resistant to pesticides or they can have different flavors. I mean, there's, there's different reasons for it. Hang on, Rod. we got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, finishing up with my buddy Robert in Vegas. Robert, you there? I am. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so GMOs, uh, that refers to foods and also animals, I think, technically might be considered GMOs, but it certainly doesn't refer to supplements. Sometimes you'll hear people say, well, that supplement was derived from a GMO crop, but that doesn't mean there's any GMO in the supplement. If, it's, if, it, if you have a certificate of analysis on a vitamin C product, for example, and you look at the certificate of analysis, it'll say contains vitamin C powder, ascorbic acid powder. There's no corn in it. You follow me? It's not like there's corn particles yeah. in the vitamin C. It's not like there's any, yeah. the, the source crop is not contained in the nutrient. So it's really much ado about nothing. But however, for foods, it's very serious. And unfortunately, we don't know what crops are GMO anymore because, you know, the genie is out of the bottle at this point. There's seeds spread and there's no way to really protect ourselves. So you can pretty much assume you're going to get GMOs from, from any kind of crops you eat, at least to a certain extent. As far as eating straight, GM, you know, guaranteed GMO crops, I would stay away from them as, as much as as much as possible. But it's not sure. the, the nature of crops is such everything kind of blends into one, you know, and everything is spread out all over the planet. At this point, it, it's really hard to keep ourselves protected from GMOs, unfortunately. And that's just the world we live in. You can chalk that up to just another source of uh, another way that we've trashed our environment. Human beings trash the environment they live in. We're the only animals that crap in our water and then drink it, basically speaking. And that's just a stupid thing that we brilliant humans do for some reason. That is true. So from your perspective, GMO is not a part of longevity and definitely No, I, no I didn't say that because I don't know about the – there are some food products that they have, and I don't really oh. – you know, longevity's got like 2,000 or even 3,000 products. I certainly don't know them all, so I can't say okay. that. But I can tell you the supplements are, are supplements. They're just chemicals that come from various crops perhaps, but those crops, even if they are GMO, are not going to be in the supplement. 
Okay, that's fair And enough. Beyond Tangy Tangerine question. doesn't even have, that one's completely dry for non-GMO crops. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. thanks, Ben. Thank you so much for your call, man. Appreciate it. Take care, buddy. All right, Angela in Florida. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, how much Ben. Thank you. Um, we were talking last week about adrenal fatigue slash adrenal acne, but we didn't get a chance to talk about some strategies. Here are some um, strategies for you, okay? Uh, first of all, you're sure. It, it, the way you can tell adrenal acne is by excessive oil secretion and the T-zone. Oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Then you're looking at adre adrenal issues. I did a really neat video with my friend Amanda Rideout on oily skin uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm not... Send me an email, ben at ksco.com. I'll get you that video. Uh, oily skin and adrenal issues need to be backtracked to some kind of stressor. T it could be an emotional stressor, of course, and mental stressor. But I like the first thing I focus on is sugar. Sugar will make you oily, and elevated insulin will make you oily. So the first thing to do if you have adrenal acne is treat it as a blood sugar issue. All right, that means all all the diabetic stuff. It doesn't matter whether the doctor said your blood sugar is fine or whether you're a diabetic or not. Just treat yourself like a diabetic. That's the first thing. Uh, reduce your intake of sugar, and that includes breads and pastas. You know, we talk about those all the time, potatoes and cereals, etc. And then use blood sugar stabilizing nutrients, especially the B vitamins, thiamine and niacin in particular, vitamin B1 and B3. You get that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, uh, as well as uh, you can get a, a, a product called the ultimate niacin which is a high dose timed release niacin and that might help you if you're dealing with oily skin or acne in general niacin is a wonderful supplement for all skin health issues and niacin deficiency shows up as skin health problems including rashes dermatitis and perhaps even acne so uh, uh, vitamin B1, B3, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, stabilize blood sugar, use selenium, which is also important for blood sugar and insulin, uh, insulin MSM, sulfur, chromium, vanadium, etc. Then there are f uh, uh, really important nutrients for the adrenal glands, zinc 50 milligrams a day, picolinate form, P-I-C-O-L-I-N-A-T-E, is a must-have for all acne conditions, including adrenal acne. You'd be very smart to, to use 50 milligrams milligrams a day of zinc picolinate if you have any adrenal fatigue issues, even if it doesn't show up as acne. Uh, also, same with vitamin C, very important. Maybe the most important of the, all the adrenal vitamins is vitamin C, uh, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. And by the way, some of these nutrients, including zinc and vitamin C, will be in my new Blemish Repair Complex product that should be out here in the next week or two. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, vitamin B12, also important for the adrenal glands. And here's a really neat strategy for adrenal health that probably you don't hear about a lot except on this program we talk about it and that is Celtic sea salt in water uh, put like a quarter teaspoon especially if you're craving salt put a quarter are you cra a salt craver Angela yeah. That's a sign of adrenal fatigue. Major signs of adrenal fatigue, by the way, are something called postural hypotension. Postural meaning your posture, how, you, um, how you're holding your body, and hypotension meaning a drop in blood pressure. You can tell you have this issue if you bend down to pick something up and then you stand up and you feel dizzy, or if you're exercising and you feel dizzy or woozy, or if you get out of bed and you feel dizzy or woozy. Those are signs that you're not, your blood pressure is not adjusting to your body movements, and that can be related to adrenal fatigue. In some Insomnia or getting up in the middle of the night uh, and not being able to fall asleep or being tired and not being able to fall asleep are all signs of adrenal fatigue, as is salt cravings. Use a quarter teaspoonful of Celtic sea salt in water and a sip on it slowly. The first sip, if you do have adrenal fatigue and salt cravings, the first sip of your Celtic sea salt water is going to be yummy, delicious, like the best beverage you ever tasted. And then gradually, as you sip more and more, it'll taste less and less delicious, and then you'll reach a point where you don't want it anymore and you're good do it the same thing the next day and you'll get your salt your, your mineral levels and your salt levels increase the adrenal glands regulate minerals this is one of their major roles along with the kidneys in fact the adrenals and the kidneys are your mineral i.e. salt regulating glands or not glands but the kidneys not a gland but systems we'll say so uh, salt water, vitamin C, vitamin B12, all the B complex. Treat yourself like a uh, like a diabetic. Slow, deep breathing. The adrenal glands don't only regulate salt; they also regulate oxygen. So make sure, and they're sensing oxygen levels. When your oxygen levels go up, uh, go down. When they drop, your adrenal glands kick into action. So giving your adrenal glands a break is part and parcel with deep, slow, deep breathing techniques. Slowly in through the nose. Slow 
slowly out through the nose. And when you're practicing your deep breathing techniques, in addition to slowly in through the nose and slowly out through the nose, you want to make sure you go into a rhythm. This is really important. The body loves rhythms, slow rhythms. You don't want to get to too fast a rhythm, but the rhythm is really important. Rhythms activate the parasympathetic nervous system and calm the adrenal glands down. Last but not least, vitamin B5 is stupendously valuable for anybody dealing with oily skin, both topically as well as internally. I'll have a bunch of vitamin B5 in my blemish repair complex, and you do need a bunch of vitamin B5, a gram or two or three of vitamin B5 a day to help slow down oil secretions. All right, Angela, that was a lot of good information for you there. If I went too fast, you have to go back to the archives. So I hope I helped you out. Okay, Thank take care. You. Have a beautiful day. All right, let's go to Sharon in Georgia. Got about, oh, we just lost Sharon. Sorry, Sharon. She dropped off, and uh, that's too bad. She was holding for a little bit. Anyway, we are at a, uh, running out of time here on the bright side. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com. If you are dealing with acne or oily skin or hyperpigmentation, dark spots or blemishes, retinol is the way to go. 5% retinol is the highest amount of retinol you're going to find in an over-the-counter product. In fact, I've never even seen over 3%. And now that I think about it, I've never even seen over 2% retinol in an over-the-counter product, and you rarely will even find that. Most retinol-containing skin health products are on the order of 0.5 to 1%. Of course, most retinol-containing products will also get you a bunch of water and a bunch of filler and a bunch of wax and a bunch of preservative and fragrance and stuff your skin doesn't need or doesn't want, and you'll never find those kinds of ingredients in our Truth Skin Health products. And also, make sure you check out our bone broth protein. If you don't have time to make bone broth, you don't have the energy to make bone broth, I, bone broth protein is a really neat way to get the amino acids that are found in bone broth. It's still not as good as the real stuff. Food is always the best way to go. But if you just don't have time or you want to bump up your amino acids, uh, bump up the amino acids that you're getting during the day, the bone broth amino acids that you get during the day, check out our bone broth protein. The chocolate is amazingly tasty. Take two scoops of chocolate, mix it up with maybe two or three cups of, of a chocolate unsweetened almond, almond milk, add a little bit of water maybe to uh, get to the level that you want your smoothie to be, throw in some organic frozen cherries and maybe some liquid essential fatty acids like Udo's blend, and then a little touch of coconut oil, crack an egg in there, oh my god, is that stuff delicious. Uh, two scoops of bone broth protein, of course, uh, I forgot to say that, two scoops of bone broth protein in with uh, your almond milk and Udo's blend and uh, cherries and coconut oil and eggs. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Tomorrow we'll continue talking ketogenesis and fiber and ways that you can leverage the power of the ketogenic diet. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.